Yo, yo, YouTube, what's up with your boy, Sports and Fitness Rants. I'm back, guys. Click that like button. Subscribe to my channel. What's up, y'all? Welcome back, guys. Welcome back. Got another great video for you guys today. As usual, man, you guys know the deal, man. We're here to put some respect on Michael Jordan, man. You guys know the deal by setting the record straight, stopping the lies, stopping the narratives. That's what's always been about in this channel. You guys get that, man. You guys appreciate what I'm doing here, man. You guys know the mission, right? And I want to thank you guys, man. Everyone across the world, everyone across the states has been supporting my channel. I'm truly humble, guys, by all support, man. You guys coming out to the live streams, man. I just started doing live streams. You guys have been really, man, just showing a lot of love in the live streams, man. Yeah, we got to deal with the weirdos and the knuckleheads and the LeBron James, you know, fan club. But you guys have really been supporting me, man. I am truly humble, guys. Everyone in the membership, I, I mean, we have like 20 people in the membership now, guys. Truly humbling, man. Much respect to all you guys out there, man. Real recognize real, man. Thank you. And in this video, we're going to speak about Michael Jordan and how he was the last player to have a 5x5 five five game. If you guys don't know Victor Wimbenyama the other night, he tied Michael Jordan as the only players in the history of the NBA to have back-to-back -back five steal, five block games. Back-to-back, -back, guys. <clears throat> he tied Michael Jordan uh, as the only other players to do in NBA's history, man. Once again, Michael Jordan, guys. <clears throat> We're going to talk about this video. <clears throat> and you guys know what to do. Turn the volume all the way up. Hit that play button. Remember, these videos are for educational purposes. And let's roll so yes guys like i said man thanks to all you guys out there for real man you guys have been with the support man it's been very humbling and like i said in this video man if you guys do not know the other day i think it was like two games ago i want to say that victor Wembanyama uh tied michael jordan as the only players in nba's history guys to record five plus steals or five plus blocks in a single game for consecutive games that's right now we all know that they did not start counting blocks and steals until, what, the 73, 74 season, I believe. So those players like Will Chamberlain, the Bill Russells, the guys that came before that, they're not included in this kind of thing with the five steals, the five blocks in consecutive games. However, it's irrelevant. It really is irrelevant because the point here that I want to make, guys, or I want to you know stress you guys, is anytime you guys think about some of these lists, guys, when you hear who has won defensive play of the year and an MVP award in the same season, when you think about the players who have done that, who Giannis, I believe, has done that, Hakeem Olajuwon has done that. These are big men. These are legit six foot ten, seven foot players. When you think about someone like a Victor Wembanyama and Michael Jordan is once again the only player mentioned to have consecutive five block, five plus five blocks. Uh, or five plus blocks, five plus steals in consecutive games. Victor Wembanyama is like seven foot five, or whatever he is, seven foot four, whatever he is. Michael Jordan is a six foot six shooting guard. I can't stress this enough, guys. This goes to the excellence of Michael Jordan, right? The effort of Michael Jordan. Once again, the defensive abilities of Michael Jordan. When you hear someone like Rasheed Wallace talk about Michael Jordan wasn't that great on defense. This is when he gets exposed, right? I've told you he exposed himself anyway because he tried to make a logical explanation or explain it, and he sounded stupid, right? You can't explain Michael Jordan not being a really good or great defensive player. There's no explanation for it because he is an all-time great defensive player. And once again, numbers like this back that up. Five-plus blocks, five-plus steals in consecutive games at a six-foot-six six shooting guard? This is not a center or a power forward, a seven-foot guy. This is a guard doing this. No guard is sniffing this. No guard is sniffing this, guys. I don't see LeBron James' name here. Where's LeBron James for consecutive five steal, five block games, right? But they'll always tell us LeBron James is the greatest all-around player in NBA history, right? Because when they say that, they're not including defense in these conversations. When we talk about all-around players, when I was growing up, to be considered an all-around player, you had to be a, you had to be consistent on the defensive end. It had nothing to do with you being able to pass and shoot and rebound. You had to be able to play both ends. Offense and defense is what it meant to be an all-around player. Now, in this era, to be an all-around player, they can Consider Trey Young an all-around player because he scores and drops assists. Luka Doncic is considered an all-around player because he can score and pass and rebound. Right, Nikola Jokic, they consider him an all-around player because of his passing ability and his playmaking and the scoring, the shooting. But none of these guys are known for their defensive abilities. None of them. None of them. And in the 90s, they would get exposed. 
right? So when we talk about Michael Jordan and the 5x5 five five for consecutive games, it's that much more impressive. Like I said, regardless of if they kept the stats the entire NBA's career, there's no guard in NBA's history, guys. No guard. I'm talking about from the 40s now, before they counted these stats, that to me has been as potent as Michael Jordan on the perimeter. There's no one. Because once again, there are a lot of great perimeter defensive players, but they cannot do the things that Michael Jordan does on the court on the defensive end. So, for example, you have a Bruce Bowen, right? Let's say Bruce Bowen is a really great man-on-man -man defensive player, right? He can play great man-to-man -man defense. But Bruce Bowen's not great in the passing lanes. He wasn't an all-time great help defensive player. He wasn't great at blocking shots or getting steals, right? He was great at man-up defense, right? An aspect of defense. Michael Jordan was all-time great in on-ball defense. Right? He could lock you down. He was great in the passing lanes, right, denying the basketball. He was great in the post defense. He was a great help defensive player, which is why he has all those blocks, right, blocking players from behind, helping on the defensive end. This is Michael Jordan, right? He talked many times over the years about having to cover up for other players' lack of defensive abilities throughout his career, right? He talked about him and Scottie Pippen having to cover for guys like Paxson, right? Having to cover for some of these other guys, the Luke Longleys, right? The Bill Wennington's, right? The guys who weren't known for defensive abilities. Michael Jordan had to cover for these guys, the Steve Kerr's, right? The Tony Kukoc's, right? They would try to exploit some of these players. Michael Jordan would never allow these things, right? The Bill Cartwrights of the world, these were talking. These guys were talking about Michael Jordan. Come for these guys, because Michael Jordan, I told you, was all time great in all facets of defense: on ball, help, passing lanes, in the post, right, the defensive IQ. All of these things were elite for Michael Jordan. This is why many people consider Michael Jordan the greatest perimeter defensive player of all time. And you know, Victor Wembanyama said something interesting in the post game press conference when they asked him about tying Michael Jordan for the only other player in NBA history to do this. Victor Wembanyama, the first thing he said is, "I wonder if he did it in wins." That was that was a great question. That's what Victor Wembanyama was all he was concerned about. He wasn't concerned about being compared to Michael Jordan for the stats. He wanted to know if Michael Jordan won those games. And I got some news for you, Victor, uh, Victor Wembanyama. I did the research for you. And yes, Michael Jordan won both of those games, ladies and gentlemen. So, guys, I, like I said, I did some research, I did some digging. This is what I do for you guys. And in 1987, right, the 87, uh, 86 87 season, right, coming back from the foot injury, right, a lot of people say Michael Jordan should have been on the all defensive first team in 1986 87. He didn't even make the second all defensive team, guys, with the numbers he put up. Go look at Michael Jordan's defensive numbers in 86 87, guys. It's off the charts. I believe to this day he's still the only guard in NBA's history to be in the top 15 in block shots and in the top 10 in steals. I believe he's only playing in the only perimeter players ever, ever done that. That's Michael Jordan 86 87. But in February, you know what's interesting also, guys, is this happened around the same time. It was literally to the day almost. Michael Jordan, February 22nd, 1987. Michael Jordan had eight steals and five blocks in a win over the Cleveland Cavaliers, guys. It was a win. He won that game, Victor Webinyama. He did win. And in the next time, the consecutive game, right, the next time he did that back-to-back -back games was two days later on February 24th, 1987. He had five steals and five blocks in that game against the Atlanta Hawks, who I believe were one of the top teams in the league that year, 1987. I believe they had like 57 wins that year or whatever it was. But he has two of those games, and he won both games, guys. This is Michael Jordan's impact, the defensive impact, not just the offensive end. On both ends, Michael Jordan impacts winning. Is to win. It's not about him putting up the stats. It's about the wins. Eight steals and five blocks. And then on the next night, you had five steals and five blocks. LeBron James has never had a five steal, five block game. I don't even believe LeBron James ever had five blocks in a game before. So when we talk about Michael Jordan's skills, the ability on both ends, the all around play of Michael Jordan, once again, this is where it gets highlighted. Michael Jordan, the only guard that you would ever think to be on these lists. Kobe Bryant's not going to be on these lists because, once again, Kobe Bryant did not block the shots or get the steals at the level of a Michael Jordan. He just did not. Does not take away from Kobe Bryant's greatness, but once again, Kobe Bryant excelled at on-ball defense. That was where his most elite skills were, right? The hustle, the effort that Kobe gave on-ball to shut guys down and stay in front of them. It's not the same as Michael Jordan's overall of a defensive game. Like I said, the help defense, playing the passing lanes, the IQ of Michael Jordan, the relentlessness of Michael Jordan, and Michael Jordan's athletic ability helps him on the defensive end. The longer arms, the big hands, right? The quick feet, the speed of Michael Jordan, the instincts of Michael Jordan, the timing of Michael Jordan. All of these things go to him being a superior defensive player than a lot of other guards in NBA's history. 
Once again, Michael Jones, the only guard doing this stuff. It doesn't matter if they kept the steals and blocks when Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell played. Once again, Will Chamberlain's a giant, and Bill Russell was what, six foot nine, six foot ten? None of these guys are six foot five, six foot six shooting guards doing this stuff with the blocks and the steals. Michael Jordan done all these things. We think about someone like Hakeem Olajuwon, who's one of the greatest all-around defensive players, right, on steals, blocks, right, one of the greatest two-way players in NBA's history. Hakeem Olajuwon did not even accomplish this feat of back-to-back five, five games. Not even Hakeem Olajuwon's done this. Remember, Michael Jordan's still the only player in NBA's history to record 200 steals and over 100 blocks in a season for consecutive seasons. This is Michael Jordan, guys. 87-88. <clears throat> this man was insane. Right? Not to mention all the points he was scoring on the offensive end. Right? Michael Jordan had those two five by five games in 1986 87 season, guys, in a season where he averaged what? 37 points a game, I believe. It's insane, guys, when you think about these kinds of things. This is what Michael Jordan was doing. So shout out to Victor Wembanyama for, you know, matching Michael Jordan, the last player with consecutive five plus five, uh, five by five games. And I told you, Victor Wembanyama asked if Michael Jordan did it during winning because we all know Spurs have been losing a lot this season. I feel bad for this guy. And yes, Michael Jordan did that, that a feat. He accomplished that feat in consecutive wins. Wins. Impacting winning on both ends. This is the greatness of Michael Jordan, guys. The greatest perimeter defensive player in NBA's history. It's not even a question to me. Michael Jordan on all levels could do it. But other players could not. Some players are great at on ball and in the passing lanes. But they're not really a great help defensive player. Right? Some people just have all these things. But they don't have the athleticism of Michael Jordan or the instincts of Michael Jordan. They just don't have, they don't have the dimensions of Michael Jordan. They don't have the effort, the hustle of a Michael Jordan. You know how much effort you have to give to average 30 plus points a game every season and play defense like this? It's crazy, guys, when you think about that. Like I said, Michael Jordan, I believe that season in 87, finished with, like, I believe, averaging like 1.6 blocks a game and like 2.7 steals a game. It was ridiculous, guys. Ridiculous, man. You guys know the deal, man. Much, much respect to Michael Jordan. Much respect to Victor Wembanyama for matching Michael Jordan and not being worried about the stats, asking if Michael Jordan won those games. That was, that was really nice to hear him ask if Michael Jordan did that while winning. Yes, Michael Jordan did, Victor Wembanyama. You guys know the deal on this channel, man. It's all about the facts, guys. Setting the record straight. Stopping the lies. Stopping the narratives, man. When they try to tell you that Michael Jordan wasn't that great of a defensive player, it's not, it's not ironic, guys, right? Or it's not a coincidence, that Michael Jordan is brought up in these conversations with all big men. I'm telling you guys, you'll see a list, the defensive play of the year and the MVPs, it's all big men, right? Something like this, like when Wanyama is a big man, right? This is what Michael Jordan did, guys. You guys know the deal, man. I'll catch you guys on the next one.